All right, so we're here with the uh, Waxker, Waxer, I don't know. It's a Chinese name, I don't know how to pronounce it. This is just a 10 watt open frame laser. So this thing's 10 watts. It's not the strongest thing, but it's pretty cool. Um, it can do up to 20,000 millimeters a minute. It has a 400 millimeter square work area. And then it's got some, you know, standard run of the mill technology and features. Here we just kind of see what I talked about. You know, it can engrave offline. It has an easy to focus module. It's got decent accuracy. It's an all metal build. We move into, you know, the cutting and engraving that it can do. It has compressed spot technology. It can do, you know, much better detail and granularity. Then it has a nice little air unit. I will say the air unit's a little loud, but it's very sturdy housing, very satisfying knob. So all of that's pretty great. The laser head itself is kind of loud, but it has this air cooling to keep the diode, you know, at the best temperatures possible so you get longevity. It has a triple motor and rail belt drive system, gives it a little bit more stability. I have seen ones where they just have the top and bottom. Having the little pyramid configuration does seem to make it less jerky. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's just kind of dive right into what it looks like in action. There will be a link in the description, a link in the sticky comment like normal. It's pretty much like all these other open frame lasers. I, I will say this is this went together the easiest out of all the open frames I've done. I, I will give them that. They had the screws all individually bagged. Um, <clears throat> everything was labeled real nice. The English or the English in the manual was really really good. And yeah, this thing took like ten minutes sitting on the couch to put together. Um, I did have trouble with one screw. Didn't want to go in quite well. Uh, I messed with it for like ten minutes trying to get it set. It just happens. Um, I think every single laser I've put together, I've had at least one, sometimes two or three that have been like that, but it's still super rigid and stuff. The screw did go in some, I just didn't want to go in all the way. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's just get into it. They did give you some zip ties and stuff to cable manage a little better, but I'm actually going to take this back apart and put it in the box just because I've run out of table space. I'm using another laser as a table for this right now. So I've got stacks of stuff to hopefully not <laughs> cut my laser underneath it. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do a test with this. I will say while it's doing this, um, the laser itself is pretty quiet. Oh, I don't have the fan on. There we go. The fan pump is a little loud and there is a fan here in the laser head itself that's pretty loud, but, you know, not so bad. Um, they could be a little bit quieter, but no big deal. I mean, it's not like you're using this. When someone's sleeping three feet away, you're using this in a workshop. Also, pardon the smoke. Uh, I forgot to get a cross breeze growing here in the garage, so I'm just going to stand outside of the garage. I will say, not only putting this thing together, but like the build quality actually seems pretty good. Um, I like that it has the ruler. It's got a 40 centimeter ruler built in on one axis and then one on the arm itself, which is kind of nice because you can get an idea where stuff is. And it is actually accurate to where the laser stops. That's something simple all these manufacturers could do and none of them do. So it's really cool that they painted that on there. It also make putting it together easy because then you could see, oh no, this arm goes on this side and this arm goes on that side because you could tell by how the text was oriented. Just a nice little thing. I will say also when I put this in the light burn, it automatically saw the um, GRBL that I had previously installed. It was the quickest setup ever with one of these for me because I already had that driver and everything loaded. It just immediately saw it, immediately knew the dimensions. I just, I love it. Don't mind me if I appear on frame here. I'm going to move the GoPro. There we go.
I will say this is my first attempt here. Um, we're doing the fill at 2400 and 75% and we're doing the cut at 480 and 90%. Hopefully it's uh, good speeds. I'm starting to get the hang of these things here. You know, I've got lasers from six brands now, ranging from CO2, that's what we're on, we're on a big CO2 laser, to diode like this, to um, fiber, and uh, I, I actually think I like these open frame diodes the best. Um, there are bells and whistles you can add to them and stuff that make them a little bit better. It'd be nice to have like an enclosure. Um, but it's also not nice to have a necessarily a permanent enclosure because, yeah. So you can get like little bag enclosures for these. They're pretty cool. I believe they also have models that have like the permanent enclosure kind of like uh, Creality does. I've seen those on their website, but I don't have any experience with those from this company. But I mean, it seems to be working pretty good. I may be engraving a little too powerful though. What, what, if, if you're still watching, um, what are your favorite kinds of lasers? Uh, again, like I said, I, I really like in these diode ones. I, I thought I would like the CO2, and I like the fiber because it can do metal and everything, but for just doing wood stuff and cardboard and all that, I, I, I really like these diodes. And they're so simple, and you know, you could hang it on a wall when you're not using it if you really wanted to. And they'll fit under your bed or whatever if you gotta shove them somewhere to get rid of them. You can swap out the laser heads real easy. You can take the whole laser unit off and work on it. It's pretty cool. All right, we're coming into the final stretch here. About two minutes left on this burn, I think. I don't know if you're picking that up, but uh, it's a very humid day and I'm standing here in the driveway. Get the birds chittering and chattering outside. So what we're doing here is one of those like knives with the screen face on it. Um, I really come to like this pattern or this this file. It's a it's a nice little test. I used to do the Star Wars test one. You may have seen that in some of my other videos, but the thing takes forever. It has so much detail. It's like a Star Wars coaster. It just takes like an hour. Even this is taking you know seven eight minutes nine minutes. Oh, that's actually looking really, really good. This might be the best one yet if it hasn't overburned. Oh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I honestly thought this laser wouldn't be very good. Um, it's the cheapest price point I've seen on one. It's only 10 watts, so it's the weakest one I've had in a diode anyway. Um, I have had an IR diode one that's a little bit uh, less powerful, but this was the lowest, and it, I. Oh, that looks beautiful. You guys, you guys got to see this when I'm done here. Um, yeah, just like everything I said, it's got the measurements on the side. It went together easy. The manual is actually in decent English. The only thing I would probably change on it is like it could use a better connector on the laser assembly itself for the air hose. And yeah, other than that, like it even came with zip ties for the cable management and everything. And you didn't have to put a lot of stuff, plug a lot of stuff together. I think I had to plug in three ribbon cables that were already in their arms and set up. It was very obvious what connector it went to, whereas I had another laser that I never actually got working. It's sitting on my table, and I've still yet to get it working because the color coding on the cable uh, were wrong. It was just wrong, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. But this one, not the case. So let me uh, go ahead and grab this here. I'm telling you guys, you ready for this? That is beautiful. 
Bring focus. That is the best version of this I have done, and that is my first try on this laser. Guys, check this laser out. If you want something that's cheap and entry level, all I did was go on Etsy and I found some 10 watt um, light burn settings and bought them. I like to do that as my starting point, and then I usually have to tweak them a little. This I would probably um, reduce the power maybe five or 10% because it is a little darker than I'd like, but I, it looks gorgeous. And then that would also help with that. Um, if you had a honeycomb to put this on, I don't have a honeycomb that would fit in here. I gave the one I had that would to uh, my sister-in-law. When they were in town, I gave them one of my lasers because their kids were really into it. So I was like, hey, here, have one. But yeah, if you had a honeycomb, you would get rid of that. And you could always come in here and just sand that a little. But man, that is awesome. Um, obviously, this thing will do, you know, plastic, cardboard, wood. That's, that's, that's about all I would do with it. But yeah. I love this thing. It's the W-O-X-C-K-E-R um, open frame laser. Guys, check it out. It is cool. All right, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video.